Hey guys, welcome back to... Uh, what? Hey guys, welcome back to the Blood Moon, I suppose. Now I've got a question for you. What if it was always the Blood Moon? What exactly would the point be to doing a Blood Moon playthrough anyways? Well, it limits me to virtually no NPCs, as it will always be nighttime, meaning the only ones that I can get are the ones that I can save and wake up. Additionally, events will not naturally spawn, which means I can't get access to the Goblin Tinkerer and therefore have no way of ever reforging or upgrading my gear. One other thing, time being frozen means that plants do not grow back, meaning that any and all potions that I can get are only obtainable through chests and pots, making them extremely limited. Alright, that actually sounds pretty difficult, so let's do the entire thing with only bows from the wiki. You know, now that I hear it out loud, it's actually not the greatest sound- Wait, this video also took me an enormous amount of time to make, so if you give it a like and sub, that would genuinely help out a lot. Thank you. Okay, it's time to protect the guide. A task that is definitely fun, and doesn't even bring me close to the stress levels of somebody threatening to wedgie me with a high-powered piston, because that wouldn't be fun! Today, the mobs are going 30 miles over the speed limit, which for some people is a perfectly adaptable speed, but for the rest of us in the aisle 5 of Target, it is not a perfectly adaptable speed. Things were getting out of hand very quickly, and the guide was not gonna hold up for very much longer. I had to think of a new plan, and fast. So my strategy just ended up being to run, which worked out pretty well. All the mobs despawned and the guide went back to his little hidey hole and I blocked him up to be safe. But and look at this. They killed me so many times that it made a graveyard. I broke a couple of tombstones and, Oh, the ghost appeared and decided to fight me for a solid 45 minutes, maybe. Because apparently master mode ghosts have more defense than the now developed scar tissue on my shins. I managed to squeeze into the cave just a little bit here and pull out my first bit of loot, which was just a book. A little bit further down though, there were some potions and uh, uh, this guy again. Surprisingly, 45 minutes passed without me getting harassed by any of the mobs before I head down into the caves. I managed to spot this little secret piece of loot up here. About five feet away from that, there's an underground house, which ends up having Yes! That's right, baby, Hermes boots right off the bat. And not too far away is a life crystal as well, which I sweep over to grab. I dove a little bit deeper into the caves, grabbed a little bit of silt, found an emerald, some cobwebs, and a little gem tree down here. In fact, I had a lot of fun in the caves. So much fun, I think I might never leave. With all that behind me, I was feeling pretty confident, so I decided to start off my bow challenge. I made myself a wooden bow, and then realized that I could probably make the tungsten one instead, so I did that. I also upgraded my axe, which had a great prefix on it. I packed up all my stuff and went to play a little bit more until I unfortunately fell to my death. But even in defeat, I found this little house here where I was definitely not beat up by a skeleton and then immediately after beat up by a slime. On my fourth attempt though, I managed to make it down safely and claim my rewards, a brand spanking new mint condition cloud in a bottle. Another accessory which I'm extremely happy about finding this early on. My movement's already looking pretty great. There was a giant pile of gold here, so I blew it up and mined out the rest of it. It actually gave me plenty enough to make myself a gold pickaxe, so my upgrades were going really fast too. I snagged this other life crystal and <laughs> not long after that, I was- <laughs> I found a couple more chests and a couple more life crystals and even a spider nest not too far away, which I was feeling a little bit lazy about, so I was going to these cobwebs really soon though, because I wanted to make a bed so I could set my spawn point to a safer place. And any measure of safety is pretty high priority right now, because the entire universe outside is currently lined up like the McRib is back on the menu and they think it's me. The, I, they think that I'm the McRib. That's not good for me. I kept going and not before long I found some obsidian, which I was actually able to mine up right away because I have the gold pickaxe. So I figured, why not grab a whole bunch? By the end of my excursion I came out with like 100? Something like that? which I gave it to the guide to see if I could make myself some special armor, but apparently I can't without tissue samples. So I just made myself the obsidian skull and went along with it. I was still gonna need some armor though, so I decided to come back into the caves and mine up a bunch of tungsten. I found a little bit more loot, including a band regeneration, in which I would probably never take off, and even a mushroom biome. Nice. On my return to the surface, I had plenty enough to make myself a ruby and a sapphire hook. Of the two, I ended up going with the Sapphire Hook instead, because I didn't really want to go back in mine and I wanted to fight King Slime later, so uh, I'm just gonna be a bit lazy. My laziness only hurts me, so you don't gotta worry about it. Now that I've got really good movement, I decided to explore the surface for a little bit. Immediately off to my right is a desert, which actually came with a pyramid. 
Not that I'm allowed in or anything like that. The mobs out here are still very overwhelming for me. And they hit me repeatedly with the old one-two luck on my shoe. But with a little bit of persistence, I was able to squeeze myself in with the old one, two, three, break on my knee on the funny polygon rock, granting me entrance to the pyramid and allowing me to claim my reward, which is a ton of gold that I have no place of spending, and one of the best pre hardman movement accessories, the sandstorm in a bottle. After looting the pyramid, I decided to venture into the desert a little bit, where I actually managed to find the golfer. I didn't wake him up to make sure that he wouldn't die, but it did give me the epiphany that I would actually be able to get some NPCs in this playthrough if I played my cards right. And with that realization, also came the realization that I would need a base. So I rolled myself back down into the cave and started getting to work. I carved out a little area to put a box in, made it look a little bit fancy on the outside, added some supports and a platform floor, as well as a little lantern for a light source. I put on the finishing decorations, including a bed, as this house will act as my safe spawn point. I considered for a second moving the guide into here, but after some careful consideration, I kind of figured I'd be spending most of my time underground, and worm enemies were probably going to be a pain, so I decided to leave them in a box upstairs. Now that I had a safe spawn though, I decided that I should explore both sides of my cave. So I went on to an excursion, where I started collecting the rest of my life crystals. I found a big granite cave here, which really didn't have anything interesting in it, disarmed some chests, and found my way into the ice biome. Where- it <laughs> What? Why would that be? Why would that be a default on Vein Miner? What is wrong with you? Ugh. Regardless of my pain, though, the ice biome had a lot of pretty good loot. I found myself an extractinator, which I'm super hyped about. And even a blizzard in a bottle. Which means that I got all three jar- not you, baby. A skeleton down here also dropped a mining helmet, which is really good. I'm one of three to completing a really good mining set. Also, probably the coolest entrance to a crimson I have ever come across. Look at this. It's awesome and spicy. In some of the chests I managed to pick up some purple juice, so I went to the surface to hit some cloud island. Where the sky is definitely not made of birds! <laughs> I can't breathe, there's feathers in my mouth! The birds managed to take me out, but luckily I have a second pot of ju- Okay. No I don't. It's fine, I swatted my last piece of loot on top of this tree, so I'll just climb that instead. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, no, that that's what I wanted. Oh, and, and the birds, yeah, and the birds, yeah, that's right, yeah, that's what I want. I came back underground and my house was feeling a little bit lackluster, so I decided to pop down a few more decorations. I didn't do anything too crazy to it for right now, but it looks kind of nice. The real thing that I need to be setting up for is my first boss, though. And there is no way that I'm fighting it on the surface. There is way too many enemies for me to be able to take care of. So I began excavating this giant pit. I carved out an outline until it was the size that I was happy with, laid down a floor, came up to the surface, took a few more trees down, and slapped down some free regen. And finished it off with some fence posts. By the end of it, I was pretty happy with the way this looked. I even had some rubies left over from... something? So I made myself some red lights, which, I don't know, I think it added to the tone pretty well. Also, while I was in the ice biome, I collected a lot of ice blocks. So I upgraded my arrows into frostburn. Took out some baby slimes, Right away from this guy, buffed myself up, and it's time to take on the eye. Hello, Mario. The second that I summoned this guy, I was immediately terrified. This arena is really small, something I did not consider while I was mining it out. This meant that my movements had to be extremely tight to avoid taking damage, and I wasn't even full health yet. In phase one, this is pretty easy. All I need to worry about is the minions, and the general movements of the boss is very easy to telegraph. In phase two is when it gets scary. The eye starts dashing at hyper light speeds. Every move that I made was critical, and this meant that I had to use a grappling hook to the best of my advantage. But that accompanied with every bottle in the game, I was able to whittle its health bar down and take it out. With its loot, I now had a way to dash for myself. I also scraggled enough crimtain ore to get myself a tendon bow, which is a super solid upgrade. After that, I went out to max the rest of my life. I went back into the caves, did a little bit more exploring, and looked for my next couple life crystals. Which, there were a lot of in this world. Something important I want to draw attention to again, accessories cannot be upgraded. They cannot be fused or reforged. I ended up getting really lucky here with a pair of homies boots that are menacing, but these will never turn into Terra Spark. These will never even turn into Spectre Boots, as I will never have a legitimate means of getting the Goblin Stinkerer. These will remain menacing Hermes boots until I fight the Moon Lord. And that same rule respectively applies to every accessory that I will get for the entire run. Now that you're all filled in, here is another pair of Hermes boots. Apparently, there's a lot of them in this world. I found a couple more houses, a couple more boots, and uh, okay, whoa, whoa there, hold on. And a little fairy who showed me something special, who was unfortunately killed in a house fire. But don't worry, because there's another fairy who was unfortunately killed by monster house, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> and a curse in place that comes with top-notch security measures such as doorstep geyser, which I do not like very much. 
a lot more of the same old, same old until I maxed out my HP. Didn't find anything too special in any of the chests around here, but I did make my way into the bottom of the desert, which had the funny stick, and also a minecart track that led directly into the jungle. By this point, my health was maxed out, but there was a ton more life crystals to collect here, so I picked them all up for heart lanterns. I was destroyed by a beetle, and managed to pop up with an extra eight smackaroos, enough to make a grown man's tattoo say, wow. I turned them into heart lanterns and I slapped them down in my arena, as well as replenishing my arrow stock. Because accessories can't be upgraded, that means I'm probably going to be farming for a lot of prefixes. So I decided to fight another Eye of Cthulhu to see if I could get a better shield. I won, but then decided that the shield is actually perfect the way it is and it doesn't need to be upgraded. So I decided to fight the brain instead. Where, let me tell you man, down in these pits, spiders! Nothing but spiders! Nothing! They never stop spawning. I was trying so hard to put down a platform for like, I don't know, maybe 25 minutes straight, which I wish was an exaggeration, but these guys just swarm you from every angle all the time. If this was real life, I would have died of a heart attack from just stress like two minutes in. I'm like four steps from that in game. Eventually I just gave up though and sped through the platform placement and started my brain fight. The arena here is automatically way larger than the one that I have at home, which gives me a huge advantage. I've also got a stockpile of jester arrows, so I'm able to pierce through the creepers really easily. The brain fight's actually one of the easier ones in the playthrough. Little life hack for you, so long as the brain is a particle debuff, you'll be able to tell which one is real. So fighting it with frostburn makes this fight a complete cakewalk. Regardless of difficulty, with the brain down I've got access to one of the best accessories in the entire game, the brain of confusion. It could use a better prefix for me though, so I decided to fight the brain one more time. But after some careful consideration, I decided the brain of confusion is actually perfect as it is and doesn't need to be upgraded. I've also got access to my next upgrade, which is Crimtain Armor. This gives me a pretty solid defense boost, as I don't quite have access to good ranged armor yet. I also made myself a bunch more tendon bows until I got a better prefix and ended up with a godly one, which is another super solid upgrade. I also did not forget the pickaxe and I even upgraded my hammer, because I like building. Speaking of building, I worked on a elevator a little bit and mined it down to a point that I was satisfied, and I replenished my obsidian a little bit, because Hellstone is my next upgrade. While I was playing around, I came back up to the surface and I found the old man dead on the floor. This meant that I could actually do an event and get some pretty good gear, so I woke him up and drug him into the other ground to see if I could get him to move in. He really didn't like that. Uh, sir, do you know what we do to people who don't like to move in? Sand pit. You get put in the sand pit. I put up a I dug a bunch of sand and I put you in the pit. Have fun. Regardless of his own appreciation for my housing structures, I was pretty amped up that I'd actually be able to do this. But first I got some progression to do. So I double checked the seams to make sure he was all sealed up, and went on to make myself some obsidian skin potions, which takes water leaf and fire blossoms. This is when I had a realization. I checked both sides of my world. No water leaf. No water leaf forever. Because ticks are turned off. Plants do not grow back, and I am not able to get them. So I ended up coming down and just doing it by hand. Which is okay, I don't need too much. I had plenty by the end of my trip to make myself the Molten Fury, which ended up with Demonic on it. I also made myself the Pickaxe, and a couple of arrows. Now I was pretty geared up, but I made my way over to the dungeon and it was time to take on Skeletron. Hello, Mario. I won. Actually, um... Does the old man come back in- Okay, no he doesn't. So I might have to do a little bit of, um... Flibbity flam alakazam, I'm the old man and I never actually died, my bad. But right now, I do not care. I cannot stop thinking about that sweet Eternian crystal. And that means that I also need an arena. So I mined a lot to the left side of my cave and came across a little marble biome, which is gonna act as my arena. So I got to work on mining it out and flattening out the area. The entire marble biome is way too small in and of itself to make it a little army arena, so I had to dig a little bit further out to the left, but I was able to make the floor consistent with all the remaining marble. I also destroyed the walls here, which I may have used vein miner for because I uh, let's try that one more time. That was a lot of mining, but I'll redo it. The mod does not usually bug out like this. That's fine, I'll just do it by hand. Don't worry about it, it's fine. After a little trial and error, I finally managed to get the walls out of here and dug out the entire space again. Now the skeleton in my arena was done, I said that I'd take a few attempts in the Old One's army, which at the time I didn't feel that I was severely underprepared for. Everything was going really smoothly, even with just the one summon. Except for, oh you little stinker, I DESPISE YOU! Now remember this character, because they'll be important 
forever. I was a little bit annoyed in game, but I didn't quite realize the magnitude of what had just happened. So I took a little bit of a break before starting my next one and prettied up the place a little bit. I added some leaves with the very valuable wood right away from this beetle, destroyed this nymph, and turned it into a nicer looking arena. Overall, I was pretty happy with it, except for this giant empty space up here, which I filled up some cages, and I came back up to buy myself eight more crystals. Now this place looks a little bit nicer, I've got a better morale and probably a better chance on these guys. I know what to expect now, so stop! Please! This time around, the wyverns are going on a little bit easier, but they were still kicking my butt. There are so many of them, and I guess in master mode, it's just not enough to have one little summon thing set up, so I'd probably have to get a few more. Of course, that doesn't apply to my little pea brain, and I just keep on trying with my single target attacks and failing miserably. I spent up two crystals and decided to back off for right now until I had some better gear. I could definitely do with a place to store my money now that I have the old man, and... <sighs> Stop! How, how did you get in there? I, it's sealed! I checked the seams! No! I loved him! My sweet Eternian crystal dealer! He's dead! You killed him! With your yucky, yucky hands! Ah! The old man died to a blood zombie that spawned in a 2x2 two two electric boogaloo little stink pit that I made out of sand, which apparently just attracts mobs. Did I say electric boogaloo? Whatever. This is great because that means the six that I have remaining from the eight that I lost are the only ones that will ever exist in this world forever. And Betsy dropped some pretty good loot, which means I gotta play my cards right. Focusing on what we have though, I got myself a money trough and I came back to fight Skeletron. A fight that goes pretty much as planned every time. Beat up the hands and then fly in a circle so that he can't hit you at all. The boss went down pretty easy, I really like having armor by the way. And now I have access to the dungeon, where I only really need two things. But while I'm here, I decided to grab a bunch of water candles, a bewitching table, and later I'll grab an alchemy engine. There's also this really nice little hallway here which I thought that I'd point out. It's pretty, I like it. But the resources I need from here are bones, and the shadow key. I also found a mechanic who I decided not to save because of a recent traumatic experience with an NPC. I should also mention that these NPCs will respawn so long as they do not exist as town NPCs. Right now, they're basically mobs and they spawn like normal. But the second that I wake them up, they're playing in hardcore. Spawn rates are completely insane in the dungeon, so a dungeon slime shows up every 2.5 seconds, meaning that I was at no shortage of keys and I was able to get what I needed really quickly. Spawn rates also mean that resources were extremely plentiful, so this entire trip was really just an in and out. By the time I got home, I had plenty enough to make myself a full set of necro armor, which gives me a crazy damage bonus. But it's not the last thing that I can get. I still got hell, where I can open up shadow chests and get myself a hell wing. So I popped down really quick and I started cracking open some chests. Chest, 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 chest. Chest, chest, chest. I looted every single shadow chest. I mean, every single shadow chest from left all the way to right. I even looked on the map to try to see if I missed any. I didn't. My world did not come with a Hellwing, which means that I had to fight the Wall of Flesh with nothing more than Hellfire Arrows and the Molten Fury. My last fight through I had a lot of issues with my attacks not piercing the hungries for the Wall of Flesh, and this time I was in master mode. This is not a very cool feeling. In fact, I was really freaked out. I only get one chance on the Wall of Flesh, and I am not exactly rocking the highest tier of gear. So I decided to come up and fight a bunch of I have Cthulhu's to see if I could upgrade my accessories just a little bit more, and I ended up getting a slightly better shield, but it did not settle my nerves at all. I was gonna have to fully prep this place to make sure that I would not lose. I only get one guide, one chance, one wall of flesh. And if I lose, I reset. That's my challenge run. Skeletron was stupid. I'm not gonna reset for that. But this is major. This is the entire second half of the game. I had to prepare. And I had a few ideas. A few of the commenters on the last video mentioned that I could make my arena out of obsidian platforms. That way lava from magma slimes will just fall right through. I figure I can also use the stone platform, so I'm gonna use a combination of both of these and use your guys' strategy. I built my bridge all the way across the entire world and made sure that it was as flat as possible. I wanted to make sure that I could always dodge. And as for Wall of Flesh Arenas, there's really not all that much you can do to prepare it. Maybe put a few buffs every here and there, which I will obviously do. But in terms of my own movement, there were some improvements I wanted to make. And it starts here. So I carved out a lot more of the cave area that I currently live in and started working on this house above here. I got the roof down, I got the foundation, and uh... Okay, let's try that again. I put down another roof and put down... Okay, I think I got a better idea. Alright, house number one finished up and I carved out another area for a second piece. 
There really wasn't many NPCs I can get in this world, so I didn't do too much building, especially with the known fact that I had to carve out a new space every time I built a house. So for this base, I just made a pretty small, quaint, and open cave area. I even added some big stalactites here, just to make it look a little bit more alive. In this big open space up here, I also did a really simple decoration with some lanterns, and polished up my wall a little bit. I also went a little bit further on my elevator, and put locks on all my doors. Now it's time for phase two of my plan. I threw myself back into the desert, and woke up my second NPC. The golfer. What is he gonna do? Golf? At the wall of flesh? Maybe, if I get desperate, okay? No. You see, the golfer's inventory expands as you complete his golfing challenges, which, as far as I know, are just distance golfed and number of hole-in-ones. And as his shop progresses, his golfing gear gets better, allowing you to buy things like luxury golf clubs. Okay, so what are you gonna do? Golf luxuriously at the wall of flesh? Maybe! Don't question my methods! So there's actually a really special item that he sells at the completion of the very last golf challenge. So I bought myself some gear and a hole, and I plopped it at the very bottom of my elevator. Now it's time for the golfing episode. Eventually, I found this little spot where it didn't even change my camera angle. And I sat here for, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes, just clicking the button and waiting live. But after all that, he was selling the item that I was so looking for, the golf cart. This thing is an absolutely incredible mount, especially for the WAF. It keeps pace perfectly, it has super high jumps, and it's affected by all the jars. And with this, I felt about as prepared as I was going to get, so I got to work on upgrading my arrows one more time, mined some stuff out, died a couple of times, and campfired up my hell bridge. I blew up some of these giant chunks here to make sure that I would always be able to hit it no matter where I was, but beyond that, that was about all I could do. I grabbed some buffs that I had straggling around my chests, I died a couple more times, and I prepared myself for my one and only chance to fight the wall of flesh. Alright, let me give you a cinematic countdown. Three, two, uh, okay just go. I summoned the wall and I was shivering in me timbers already. I really thought I would not be able to pierce any of these hungries, but it turns out the knockback is fantastic on these arrows, and I was able to cut through them pretty easily, even in master mode. The golf cart kept pace just as I hoped, and the health went down way faster than I expected, even faster than my stabs and wands playthrough. Apparently when you have armor set bonuses, you do a lot more damage. The Wall of Flesh went down is probably one of my easiest fights in the entire playthrough. But that's just the beginning of it. The game actually gets hard now. I've been getting babied this entire time. Things from here on are not gonna be so easy. Ladies and gentlemen, hard mode. Oh hey look, the wizard, I'm still getting babied. He was just chilling on my front porch, so I got the wizard. One of the last saveable NPCs I'd be able to get. But we're in hard mode now, baby. Which means that the skeleton merchant is now officially selling the funny hand, which I of course purchased, because why would I not do that? I also found that the hollow is right next to my house, which is, um, comforting. It's also a good time to realize that the surface is completely overrun by dogs, who definitely will not pose a major threat to me, no matter how much armor I have. As per usual, I continued on with normal progress and broke some demon altars, unleashing all these ores in my world, and dropped down into hell to sag myself a few. On my way down, though, I managed to find myself a mimic who gave me a star cloak. Not that I was really planning on using it, but I thought that I mentioned. I died a couple of times, which respawned me back on the surface as I keep forgetting to reset my spawn point back in my normal bed, which wouldn't be so much of an issue if the surface was not completely overwhelming with guys. Yeah, I'll have 50 million guys with that. I'll have a hamburger and 50 million guys. And also a new cobalt pickaxe, which albeit very short lived, was the next tier of my upgrade, which is now going to be Mithril. This gets me the anvil, and I'm immediately going to do the same thing for the next tier, Adamantite. So after getting beat up by some bats, I ran down to grab some, got stoned by a stone golem, got harassed by a couple of ghouls and guys, and luckily even came across a magic quiver without having any farm, which is one of the best accessories that I think I will get in the entire playthrough. Additionally, those trips gave me enough to make the full Adamantite set, which gives me a crazy defense and damage boost for the time being. 
Now I was feeling a little bit more prepared, so I came back up to the surface to make a memorial for the guide and test out my armor a little bit. Which takes a beating, but not this kind of a beating! It was pretty clear to me right off the bat. Armor was not gonna cut it, and I was gonna need a little bit more in the damage department. There's immediately a whole bunch of bows I can go for in hard mode, but they're not gonna be very useful to me unless I have a good ammo source. So before I got to work on that, I hopped into the jungle to break as many trees as I could, and maybe I myself the magic quiver. Having access to the wizard means that I get the crystal ball, and this is totally possible. Also, probably gonna be the only reason that I'm able to attack later on. Now I'm feeling a little bit more confident. All right. While I was on the surface, I grabbed myself a can of worms. Ignore this for now, it's important later. And spent the remainder of my time running into the ice biome. All right, buddy. What are you doing here? Let me give you a little lesson on bows. Normal ammo sucks. It's bad. It does not get you very far in terms of damage, and endless quivers of varying ammo types do not exist. Meaning there's no way for me to get chlorophyte shots or or bullets or whatever. They're not real. Wow, that was a bad stutter. However, certain bows do convert regular ammo types into a special type, such as the ice bow, the purple one, and the marrow, which are all readily available to me at this stage, except for the purple one because goblins don't exist, and you should not be scared of them. So for the first little bit here, I'm farming around in the ice biome, trying to grab myself a quick ice bow. This does not go well, and enemies do not give me a fun time at all. In fact, they give me such a bad time that I give up almost immediately after making a very small farm. Terraforming is almost impossible, if you hadn't already gathered that, and it's a tad discouraging, believe it or not. So discouraging that I figured I'd just go and build a farm at my own house, which is equally as fun. Oh, were you building something over there? Oh, oh, I got you. Oh, you're frozen now. Oh, I got you again. I get you every time. I'm Dracula now. Oh, oh, oh you're frozen. I just, stop! Stop it now! This thing took a pretty long time, but eventually, after having my skin slowly whittled away by every mob on the planet, I was able to put myself down a pyramid in the wrong place. After putting down the pyramid, I had a realization that I have no idea what I'm doing and I might need a little bit of help. So I had to pull up a little tutorial online, which just so happened to be done by the one and only Waffle Time. Who explains that this needs to be uh, like 40 something blocks or something like that? I already forgot. I got a little bit lost in that frankly beautiful video. But regardless, I was able to put myself together a proper arena here with a massive chasm carved out underneath it, which only cost me like most of my limbs and free movement. But I got it done, and now I've got a farm that I can sit in for hopefully not five days, right? It's not gonna take like five days to get the thing that I want, right? It's not, it's not gonna take that long, right? All right, to be totally honest with you, I'm kind of tired of the farm right now, so I'm gonna go back into the ice farm and try to grab that ice but I'm gonna ask myself a little question here. Why do I actually play this game? What reason? Fun? Because if so, when do I start having that? I came back to the farm and my house is a graveyard. No oh, are safe. This thing is a monster. It is beautiful. It completely melts enemies. And not only that, it's a fantastic money farm. Not something that I'm really gonna be needing ever, but I will need lots of drops. And this thing is going to provide that. Also, somewhere around this time, I decided to upgrade the base a little bit because it felt a little bit lackluster. It might not be my greatest build, but I don't have access to a whole lot. Even the wood accents on this thing are extremely limited and I'm not even allowed to paint them. Much less do I have access to all the things that I would normally have, like crystals in the hollow because they're, because they grow like plants. I, I don't know, man. I'm very limited here, okay? It feels like I have a weirdly small number of blocks to work with. I can still improve the farm a little bit more, so I decided to delve myself into the hollow and grab myself some pearlstone bricks. With these, I was gonna make a makeshift hollow biome, and then I could farm some souls just as well. While I was doing this, I actually got it! I thought that I would have to sit in here for like five days, seriously. I only had to sit in here for four and a half. But regardless, I somehow managed to get the bow that would be carrying me through the entirety of the mech bosses. This gives me a serious damage upgrade. Not to mention high velocity rounds, which make it way easier to hit my targets. There's still a little bit more that I can do though, which means that I'm taking a break from the farm for a second and jump into the ice biome. My rule of it being permanent rain does hurt me a lot, but there is one benefit that comes from it, which is that ice golems can spawn. These guys drop ice cores and ice feathers, which make a really freaking good armor set, as well as my favorite pair of wings, which I used in my previous video as well. This time around, I'll get to show off the actual armor set though, which is 
I believe the highest damage armor set that you can get this early in hard mode. This thing seriously carries me up all the way to the Moon Lord, and all it takes for me is beating up these guys. So I set up a pretty quick farm for him, and didn't leave until I got all three cores and an Ice Feather. Now, my stupid, stupid, dumb brain thinks that it's the best idea to get a clip of me making them all together at once, right? Because that makes that makes the video just a million times better. Why am I complaining so much? Well, I decided to come and fight wyverns so I could get some souls. I thought that'd be pretty easy. A revelation are you having right now that you have single target attacks? This does not work very well against worm enemies or your skill level in Terraria. I came up here and I got beat up for maybe 40 minutes. I give a lot of timestamps for goofy things that I end up taking me like way too long, but I'm not kidding when I give any of them. I was seriously just up here like picking away at some dragons for like almost an hour, completely unsuccessful. And with all these harpies around, it was just nigh impossible for me to go anywhere with this. I'm sick of warm enemies right now. So I decided to come back down into the... Who was that? I grabbed all the adamants that I need to make the full armor set before going to get all the wing stuff, which gives me yet again another massive damage bonus, as well as applying Frostburn for free on all of my melee and ranged attacks. Not that I'm allowed to use melee, but for any of you sword users out there, take a break from titanium for a second. This armor is fantastic. It also enabled me to finally be able to kill a wyvern and I was able to make myself the wings. Now it's time to bounce back into the farm because there's still one more bow that I can get. Having converted into a hollowed biome means that I'm able to get souls of light, with which I'll be crafting keys of light to fight hollowed mimics, which drop the Daedalus storm bow. The first one that I fought only dropped me the hook, which means it's time to sit in the farm. Riveting gameplay. All right, all right, you know what? I, I'm kind of tired of the riveting gameplay. Let's do something boring and finally fight King Slime. You know, that boss that I mentioned at the beginning of the game. I used to use this strategy all the time. You summon King Slime, beat up his minions, and you get tons of souls. While this would be a very valid strategy, this is not what I'm doing right now. The actual reason that I'm fighting King Slime is to get the Solidifier, because that way I'm able to make chests out of gel, and I don't need to spend as many of my world's rapidly deplenishing resources. I beat up a couple more, and before long, I got myself a Daedalus Stormbow, and an absolute beauty it is. While it doesn't have a prefix, it definitely has my heart, as I can attack any of these enemies from wherever I want, and you cannot stop me, except for when you do which is often and has already been often. When is it gonna be my turn to be scary? Well, while the enemies have me in number, I have them in wit, sometimes on a good day. And I started exacting my master plan of turning my farm into a convertible arena. This meant that I had to go wake up my next NPC, the mechanic, who I bought a bunch of wires from to rig my farm to a switch that instantly converts it into an arena. I'm actually pretty proud of how this came out, especially considering I wasn't allowed to use the grand design. The concept here is that you flip one switch, it turns into a farm, flip the next, it turns to an arena. I even decked out the entire thing with heart lanterns and campfires. It's a little goofy, but it's legitimately efficient. Water candle goes on while you're farming enemies, sunflower goes down and water candle goes off when you're fighting bosses. Also, I said I wasn't going to use this again th last time, but I, I forgot the world gen mod gave me one sunflower one singuloid sunflower that is the only one in the whole universe forever so that that's fun so i brought it inside to keep it safe i think it's about time we start taking on some mech bosses of course to warm up the arena i started out with the twins my absolute favorite boss in any video game ever i love them so much i wish i could just hug them and snuggle them and love them forever i love them so much they make me so happy i love how spherical they are i love that there are two of them and i love that they like to hurt me my first attempt on these really did not go all that bad to be honest. I beat up spasmatism pretty good with even this really low damage bow, but even still I never get them my first attempt. One nice thing about farming mimics for so long, I got a whole bunch of mechanical boss summons. Specifically, I got Skeletron Prime like five times. So I had a lot of attempts on him, but in perfect honesty with you, while I was figuring out a good pattern in my arena, I was not doing very hot on Skeletron Prime. Especially when he started punching me and hitting me and killing me and beating me up and shaking all the lunch money out of my pockets. He grabbed me by the body and I went. And he started shaking me around. Frankly, I was really upset by it and also um, hurt. Eventually, I started realizing that there was a pattern to his kidney pulverizing tendencies. And if I just went in a circle, he would not be able to reach me or my precious internal organs. In fact, going in a circle completely trivialized the fight and I was able to kill him very easily easily without taking very much damage besides some random enemies around here and just like that skeletron prime goes down easy rewarding me very nicely with a single piece of hollowed armor which no complaining i'm probably gonna use the frost armor anyways but that means my next boss is the twins and this time around i've got some armor so you would think things would go a little bit more smoothly right right all right let me tell you something that i've learned about the twins from my previous playthrough 
I don't like them. I don't know what it is. Their patterns are not complicated, but I just cannot, like, I, I can't do it. In concept, they're so easy. But when it comes to the execution, I just cannot fight these guys. Even with armor and everything, they are giving me a massive amount of trouble. And it seems like no matter how many times I practice this fight, these guys still find a way to kill me. The other issue that I'm coming across here is just how long it takes to be able to kill these guys in the first place. My maximum damage output is not that high. Daedalus Stormbow, regular ammo, frost armor is about as high as I can go. Whatever that is, that's how much I'm dealing at max. And far be it for it to suit my playstyle of just flailing around and trying to hit the boss as much as possible, the twins just repeatedly kill me. Every time. And this time, I do not have a cheese method. My frustration just like five fights in tells me that I should probably beat up the destroyer first and try to get some powered armor. Apparently, Master Mode Destroyer does not care about your feelings either, and just turns my entire arena into a big field of lasers. Much like the twins, his fight's gonna be an endurance test, which means I'm not really getting a break here. This starts the loop. Fight the twins. Sit in the farm. Go outside. Farm for eyes. Fight the twins. Eventually, I decided that this arena is just not working for me for this boss fight. Steltron Prime went down nice and easy in here, but these guys are a different story. I needed some open land where I could actually dodge your projectiles, so I moved myself outside. If you're wondering why I didn't move my arena up here in the first place, it's because things like clowns, wraiths, possessed armor, werewolves, everything. Every single mob will be here. And I know that at least underground, there's only going to be about three types of enemies I have to deal with. Up here? I've got a lot more. And not only that, they've got a lot more space to spawn. And just as I predicted, they cause a massive issue. Even with a fully lit arena under the Blood Moon filter, it's really hard to see things like possessed armor. And I oftentimes find myself just running in a straight line to my doom. And that's not even to mention the air enemies that completely throw off my pattern half the time. But a little shimmer of hope somewhere in the twins fight. There's a unicorn running through the hollow. Now, I always thought that they could only spawn at night, so I was curious and I went over and I just beat it up. The first unicorn that I killed in this playthrough Drop me a blessed apple. Seriously, the first one. And I was freaking out. And this is why I record every second of my playthroughs. With this, I had a whole new form of movement and I was able to outpace the twins completely. But all that being said, yet again, when it came to the execution, it was not working. I kept fighting them and I kept fighting them and I kept fighting them, and I kept farming in my farm, and I kept farming for eyes, and it didn't matter. No matter how many times I took on the twins, I just could not get them down. <laughs> and now with this mount, I finally have some- No! No, f*** that, I'm playing kicks. Girl, are you a b Because you make me <laughs> <sighs> This boss fight has been going on for too long. It's time I pull myself into shape. After days of fighting this, I finally managed to snag myself an attempt- oh, okay, not that one. But the one after that? Oh my gosh! Random f***ing enemies, dude! I'm telling you, that was the only thing. That was the thing. That was the thing that was making it so bad. With the peace candles, there were so many less- Oh my gosh. The twins are finally down, and I was actually able to make myself both remaining pieces of hollowed armor. 
To be totally honest with you, I thought the damage deficit was going to make me not use the set at all, but at a certain point I realized its value with its dodge chance, but for the time being I decided to stick with Sprost Armor, especially because the next boss is the Destroyer and the Wyvern, and I kind of want some big beefy damage on me. I even whipped out my remaining Hellfire arrows. <laughs> my first attempt did not go so well, but by the second one I realized that I was actually able to outpace the boss by just running on the Unicorn, which once again starts to taste a little bit like cheese, and so be it, it takes me four hours to kill the boss, but that's okay. I was able to do it, and with that, we're done with the mech bosses, baby, and the jungle is going a little bit wacky, which means it's plant time. First order of business, I throw myself down and I start getting to work on an arena, which has a couple of guys in it. Jungle spawn rates are no joke when there isn't a permanent event on that makes things spawn up more. You know how I keep on uh, like talking about terraforming being like almost impossible? This is a pretty good example. But seriously, this thing took me like way longer than it should have just cause all these little like freaking hands keep on going, I'm gonna get you, <laughs> killing me instantly. But eventually I managed to get myself the box down. I should mention as well, this is not the current version of Terraria, and I did have to spawn in the bulb. My sincerest of apologies, but uh, it, it's supposed to spawn, and it just will not. So I put it in a pretty remote location where it'd be kind of inconvenient me for me to get to, which was a really smart decision, seeing as I'm the guy with the power to not do that. So every time I came down here, I had to walk like, I had to take a long, serene hike next to a mos festering mosquito lake just to get uh, just to get down and like start working on the bomb thing again. But uh, whatever, whatever. After several- ah! I managed to get down some platforms as well and started preparing for the fight. I put down a couple of peace candles in preparation and question, what are they even doing? It doesn't make... It didn't make a difference. I started monologuing because I was like freaking out about how many enemies there were. <laughs> That's not even a joke. I started like, I started having like a, a problem. I have some, am I part of like some f***ing plot here? Like what's going on? Is, is the fact that I need to get pushed around and killed like 500,000 times by random enemies that spawn an egregious amount? Like, is, is that vital? To something. Additionally, in my preparation, I also dug out the bottom of it filled with water. This is actually a strategy I found out in a race with Mars. The big pink seeds that she shoots are actually affected by liquids, and the water slows them down significantly. They do have slight homing, but it makes it a lot easier. I also ran home and beat up a couple of mimics, so I can give myself some potions. And now, it's plant time. Now, I didn't think that the plant fight was going to be easy, but giving you my full honesty here, Plantera was starting to scare me. The first bit of her fight is not bad. I'm able to just pin her in one spot and just spin her out in a circle. But when she opens up for the second phase, she starts doing these weird movements and like pushing you into the corners, which wouldn't be so much of a problem if it weren't for the little tendrils. These things just completely encase you and leave you with pretty much no place to move. I chose to do this challenge in master mode because I thought it wouldn't be so bad with some armor. Even with defense, these things have brass knuckles equipped with pistons. I actually feel like one of those heavy duty mechs where they carry around giant like metal pipes with it's just punching me and I, let me tell you it hurts the plant fight was not going so great and she killed me a lot but around i kid you not 19 attempts in i'm not even gonna shy away from that one like 19 attempts to figure this out i realized that i could get around it with unicorn dashing which is a pretty simple piece of tech where you activate shield of cthulhu and then turn it immediately into the unicorn this automatically puts it at max speed and gives you a lot more distance than you would ordinarily get. In fact, it gives me just enough speed to get around her in pretty much any situation and I'm able to pin her down in the middle just as I did in phase one. This far from cheese is the fight and it does take me a few tries, but with a little bit of persistence, I was able to take her down. Plant is down, maybe, which means that I got access to a few new bosses and my next bow upgrade. Before I take on the golem, there's somebody I want to pay a visit to, somebody who I defeated once in my previous playthrough, and somebody who's going to drop me one of the best bows in the game, the Empress of Light. Now, here's a little thing. I really, really want to win this fight. However, if you want to take a quick look at this and tell me right now, oh yeah, that's a lot of damage. I welcome you, because even if you can muster up the strength to say such a disgusting lie, you're still just going to be incorrect factually. This thing is an absolute tank unit and not to mention to be able to summon this i need to sit around in the hollowed biome in the blood moon waiting for the thing to spawn i don't even get a choice of when it spawns i need to wait for this little butterfly kill it immediately slam down a stake that i got from the underground and start the fight on like half hp every time i know a lot of you can beat this boss really easily 
but I don't have any practice in this, and I don't even have a good time with the twins. I cannot keep up for, I kid you not, it actually takes us long. I have it timed out. 30 minutes to get to phase two. I can't hold out like that. Things might be a little bit different if I was able to fight Duke Fishron, but hypothetical fishing didn't get me anywhere, and I do not have access to the tsunami which means that these are the last bows that I can get before the eventide. And right now, it is not looking like I'm even gonna get the eventide. And I'm running out of options really quickly. There is still one thing I can do, but first, I decided that I'd consult some friends. I, I think that there was like a shimmer thing for a little while, but I forgot to update and I've been playing in modded, <laughs> so uh -huh. I don't even have the shimmer. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think about because right now, as it stands, I need to fight the golem through the uh, the cultist with a 70 uh -huh. damage bow, which is ass, but it works. Oh, go go for like debuffs, maybe. Uh, what's is it? Isn't guard pistol a debuff or like a? Uh, yeah, I could use that if I wasn't doing bows only. <laughs> Oh, oh, I thought it was ranged only. Oh, oh no, okay. oh no, baby. I'd be using way better gear if it was ranged only. Let me look at your accessories real quick. Yeah, go for it. What about crates? Any, like, get anything good from them? Let me check. Yeah, but I've only got, like, I think 20 worms in a chest somewhere. Oh, yeah. And that is all you don't have the that entire gun. world. That is literally <laughs> every single piece of bait I could possibly get. This is insane. You can kind of see how I'm not having any fun anymore, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're uh, yeah, I don't see like genuinely can't think of any unless you can cheese her somehow. I looked at that online. You can cheese her if I spawn a thousand flares and start using summons. Can you find uh the old what's his name? The old guy on the ground. The tavern keep? Yeah. Yeah, I found him in pre-hard mode and he's dead. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> he he <laughs> passed away. However, yeah, before he died, I bought six crystals from him. Okay, so, so now, now, now hear me out. Have you seen that video? You can like glitch the got people so like they can never get past a certain point. You can avoid like, them set up a Yeah, so they, they keep walking in but like teleporting out and then you can like infinitely leave them there. But I don't know about Betsy though. Betsy, if you can beat Betsy in one attempt, then, then... <laughs> <laughs> then I have to beat Betsy with shit ass gear in one attempt. Duke is actually easier, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, Duke, I can't catch bait. Yeah, Duke but... <laughs> would be easier, yeah, but I can't catch a truffle worm. Like, there's nowhere that I can Damn. pick up the item unless I get, like, I don't know how many. I think it's like a 0.5% chance for the guy to give you a golden bug net. And I have mm -hmm. to do that on my first attempt. And that's thinking if I even get the quest fish to begin with. You don't have a that's ranger okay. emblem? No, I didn't get one from the Wall of Flesh. More Martian probes. You can start the Martian Madness. I'm not sure if you can get anything, but you know. <laughs> if uh, you, you can, can get the Influx Wafer and... Uh, oh, oh, uh, the, the plasma no, he, thing. No, he's doing, he's doing bows only. I can only use bows. Uh, cosmic car key, the, cosmic... You can get a mount. That would the be cosmic good. Cosmic car. I, I think you can. I'm pretty sure I have done it. Like, I remember, maybe, I think. I, I don't know you why you want. If they can spawn at night, then I can do it. Ooh, How'd you even get what? to hard mode? I had a really, That's... really bad playthrough. <laughs> Beat you, I love you. And that man had some brilliant ideas for me. I decided to hop into my old one's army arena and test out the Hoik. Turns out, it works. And not only does it work, it works really well. Initially, I tried to set up sort of a full scale thing so I could evade those like little flying enemies, but enemies just have a tendency to jump over the hoik thing if you do this, and it just doesn't function at all, which is too bad. But the ground enemies are completely stopped, which makes this infinitely easier on me. The only thing I'm gonna have to focus down is the flying enemies. So for the first few waves of this, all I gotta do is stand in front of the crystal and shoot from side to side wherever I please. I can even go home and heal if I want to. Unfortunately for my first one, I didn't realize just how close I had put it, and enemies that shoot projectiles were able to break my crystal, which sucks, but it's alright. I still got plenty more and I'm able to improve the arena now. My second time around, I put the hoik a lot closer to the portal, and this worked like a charm. I didn't even have to see ground enemies if I didn't want to. But then, come out the flying enemies, which are still posing a threat to me. My damage is just not high. Neither is my defense, which means that just a few hits from these guys and I'm out of there. And a piece, they take like five hits to kill, which is a pretty high number when there's like four of them coming after you at once. This is once again turning into an Empress of Light scenario where I really want to do the event, but I don't think that I have the gear to do it. And this is starting to freak me out. I can't even fight the flying enemies. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fight Betsy. Later I was on a call with Get Good, just fighting the Empress of Light, seeing if I could just get a little bit closer than I did last time. And 
it's just not working. I'm pretty convinced that the Eventide is basically the only reason that I'm gonna be able to fight Betsy, and the only reason I want to fight Betsy is for the Eventide, so my ultimate decision here before I waste all of my crystals is just to move on to the Golem. I know that after that, the only two things I'm gonna plow through are the Cultist and the Vortex Pillar. By that point, I can get the Phantasm and finally have some gear that I'm actually able to use. So, I went fishing. That's right, I went fishing. Let me put up a bit of a stinky, grimy idea in your head right now. So, I cannot catch bait, right? And I cannot fight Duke Fishron because I can't catch bait, right? Here's a brand new little concept for you. I call it hypothetical fishing because it can happen in theory. So the angler's got a really special item that he can give you for a quest fish. This special item is the gold bug net. As far as I know, this thing is just the regular bug net, but slightly larger. But for me, it's the only reason I'd be able to catch a truffle worm. So I bought myself a mechanics fishing rod and I threw myself into a cloud island to start working on getting a harpy fish. I've only got a little bit of bait, which means that if I get the quest fish at all, it'd be a complete miracle. And if it were so easy to just fish and you know, you know, fish with the fishing rod, That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be so easy. I would love that. But no, there has to be 100 dragons. Not only that, there are blood moon fish now. And the very first thing that I managed to pull up was the blood eel, who, in collaboration with a wyvern, decided to be my first death and my first of many deaths. These guys just kept spawning, even with a peace candle. Apparently there's three types of worm enemies up here, and I'm not very happy about that. But I kept fishing, and surprisingly enough, I actually managed to get myself the harpy fish. Now for the moment of truth. He didn't give me the net. He didn't, he didn't give me the net. So now it's golem time, baby. Am I right or am I right? I'm pretty used to the golem not being like a crazy difficult fight, but I'm also used to his defense not looking like that. Oh, Jesus Christ, I think I'm gonna pass that. Now, the fight doesn't really get harder. I guess in terms of how much longer it goes on for, it's more difficult for sure. That being said, if I just wave my arms and go, whoa, you can't get me, whoa, then the boss really can't do much to you. No problems there. I, what did, the, what did I just do? I'm losing my mind. I, this playthrough is actually driving me insane. This, this is real. This is, this is for real. This is actually, actually for real right now. It's go I'm going crazy. I beat the golem, but not without realizing just how little damage I was doing, which is starting to hurt a little bit. I needed something that would boost my confidence just a little bit. So I used a magic conch to get myself to the beach, built a platform up, and activated a Martian probe. Now, I didn't even know that these guys could spawn during a blood moon. For some reason in my head, I think about the moon events or the solar eclipse or things that would require it being a different time of day. But really, I'm totally able to do this, pirates, goblins, if they could spawn. And this is a massive deal for me. At this stage of the game, if you hadn't figured it out already, I am scrounging for what I'm actually able to do in this playthrough. And the fact that I can do this event at all is exciting. They're not very easy to kill and they keep on exploding me! So I started panicking and hitting them with my funny hand, but that didn't really work either. So for the most of it, I'm just kind of using the Daedalus Stormbow and running around and killing as many as possible. A slow process, but one that I would have to go through. Somewhere during the invasion, I got the laser drill, which I'm pretty happy about. But that was before the saucers started spawning. This is where my damage starts to show through. It takes me around 15 minutes to be able to kill one of these things, and that's given that I'm able to actually dodge their attacks. This is not cool. And they just keep killing me. I fought them again and again and again, and I just, I couldn't couldn't do it. What the f- 15 minutes is a long time, and that really hits you after you die four times. I realized there had to be a better way to do this, otherwise there is no way I'd be able to farm these things. That's when I decided to look online once again, and I discovered a very cool piece of tech. If you dig yourself a long strip in the ground, most of their projectiles won't be able to get you. The only thing you would have to worry about is the laser, and seeing as I have the data with Stormbow, I'm able to attack them. It still takes a really long time, but like this I'm actually able to fight the saucer. That is until phase two, when they start going stink mode and go Oh, hey, look, I got to phase two. No, you did not. This is gonna be a lot of fun. That invasion ended up passing over, but luckily during a blood moon, these things spawn pretty much every time I go to the ocean. And during my second invasion, I improved upon the box a little bit by putting a ton of lava over the top of it. This was really efficient and pretty much solos the event so long as I just stand underneath it. And before long, saucer starts spawning again. Okay. Now I'm a little bit upset -y. By this point in the playthrough, I am just dragging my legs behind me while my arms crawl through the blood-soaked dirt. And I'm not going to sit here and farm these guys for hours at a time. So I rigged my event arena to be the Blood Moon Destroyer 3000. I attached every trap in the book to this thing and hooked them up to the shortest timer that I could buy. Flames, spikes, darts, lava, spiky balls. This thing is an absolute destroyer. Well, I wish I had some teleporters. This is pretty sad. 
satisfying. And in its full functionality, it is extremely menacing, to say the very least. And with it, I feel a lot more prepared to take on the event. So I went to summon the third one. I'm going to mention briefly as well, to start this event, I have to briefly unpause time. I only have to do it for a second, and I immediately switch it back to midnight, but I did have to unpause time. But with this machine built, the only thing standing in my way was the saucer. Even though it took me quite a few tries, I eventually did figure out the pattern for phase 1 and phase 2, which is to dash back and forth as it always moves behind you. This one only gave me the summon, which I am not allowed to use, so I started on the next one. So I started on the next one. This one also did not drop a key. The next one dropped a laser machine gun. I'm tired. It's already been 45 minutes. But on my fourth kill, is that it? I got it! We now officially have infinite flight, baby. It is actually obtainable. I thought that it absolutely was not going to be, where's the cultist? All right. So I did a little bit of research, and I realized that the cultist is not going to spawn with time paused. So I briefly unpaused it, and the second that I did, goblins are real panic! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still not allowed to get the goblin tanker, I just had to beat them up really quick. This is a technical issue. I spawn killed a golem to see if I get them to spawn naturally, but even that did not work for some reason. I don't know what the spawn conditions for these guys are, but I do know the cultist will probably take me more than one attempt. So unfortunately, at the end of the day, I will have to spawn them in manually. But don't worry. It doesn't make the fight any easier. The cultist A is very small and hard hit with his bow, B d isn't dying, and C is surrounded by his lovely friends and family, who I had a lovely discussion with and said things like, it's so nice to meet you, how are you doing? Ah, oh, you killed me! Why did you kill me? Ah! Well, they are very dead set in doing physical and emotional damage to me. And at some point, it becomes too much. This entire latter half of the game has been absolutely destroying me. No, we're not doing this. Introducing the li li light up rainbow box that I, I I made a box. I made a box, we can't hit me very much. Effectively, what I've done here is the same thing I did with the invasion. I made myself a box, this time featuring an extra layer so that his projectiles can't get through. With this, I'm able to dash back and forth until he does an ice attack. Phase two is the same kind of thing. And before long with this method, the coldest goes down easy. <sighs> it's here, oh God! Hi, man. How you doing? Good to see ya. Ah, yes. Welcome to the pillars. I don't like this event. They hurt a lot, like most things in this game, but it's mandatory that I deal with them and they will never leave until I deal with them. But I have no idea where all this complaining is coming from when it's technically my first bow upgrade since the Wall of Flesh. You can probably guess the first pillar that I went for is the Vortex because I'm not doing this entire thing with my current setup. When I first paid a visit to the Vortex pillar, they just shot me, killing me instantly every single time. But pretty quickly after that, I figured someone out. In my last playthrough, I mentioned that there was a terrifying swarm of locusts and I kind of figured they did the thing where they like split off so I lured one over to the farm and I let it die to the fire they break off into these little like gross scrubs which grow up into the big guys and the cycle repeats doubling pretty much every time after a pretty short period of time this is once again absolutely terrifying and a much safer method for me you can probably guess I just sit in here for around 15 minutes applying frostburn every now and again with the Daedalus Stormbow and letting the Blood Moon Destroyer 3000 do its work paying the pillar an actual visit I find that its shield is down and I'm able to and I'm able to, and I'm able to finally take it down. And now I'm jumping over the moon. I'm emoting, I'm real life emoting. Because now I got the phantasm. And it does like, less damage than the marrow? It does less damage? In the marrow? This is a concerning visual. However, the DPS is obviously a lot better. But I was kind of expecting like, you know, 80 or like, 90 or like a million or like a hundred even but that's all right it feels good to have my hands on something i can actually use and while i don't like the pillars what better place to test it out than enemies that are made for its dps the solar pillar doesn't care but you know what solar pillar Neither do I! Here's yet another piece of tech that I learned from a race with Mars. You can build yourself a box in the sky, and so long as you put it just off screen, all the enemies from the solar pillar will spawn in that exact location. From there, so long as I can actually get up there, it's just a matter of me shooting straight down. And like most things this playthrough, with a little bit of persistence, I was able to finally get it. All right, with a little bit of persistence, with a little bit of persistence, I was finally able to get it. Doing this makes pretty short work of the solar pillar die! And I get to move on to the nebula, where I have a mental breakdown and scream a lot. And I'm not saying that because it's funny, I'm saying that because it's real, man. It's real, I don't like the pillars, man. I don't like them. I'm just over here getting beat up by a bunch of intellectual boys. I don't like it. They're using their, their intellectual beam. And I don't know what the cheese method is for this one. So I popped back home really quick and decided to try making myself another phantasm in hopes of a better prefix. 
I did not get a better prefix, which means that I'm gonna rock out of this pillar the way the game tells me to, slowly and painfully, getting hit by every single laser, orb, whatever, wizardly mind wave, but ultimately it doesn't matter. I just keep on coming back until the pillar's dead, and now there's only one more to go. I chose the Stardust pillar to do last because it's just me floating around a bunch of orbs for a little bit. In fact, I wasn't even in the pillar once again. I instead just wait for the message that I've killed a hundred of these things, and then the pillar's open and I'm able to kill it. And now, impending doom approaches. The end of the challenge. The final hurdle. This entire playthrough has been in complete darkness. Limitations beyond anything that I expected it to ever be. But I'm here. And the Moon Lord is killing me! Why would there be a Stardust cell here? Why is it back for revenge? My first attempt is a no. Of course, I've got enough to make myself even two Celestial Sigils, but to be totally honest with you, I'm kind of feeling like I gotta get this done on my first try. I'm one of these players that usually needs to do some practice, so if I die on my first attempt, my second attempt's likely to go the same way. So before I take on the Moon Lord, I build myself a gigantic platform. My plan for it here is to do it the same way that I've done it so many times over, which is to run directly away, making the projectiles much easier to dodge, and just play the waiting game. I'm still not confident in this, so before I take on anything, I look up a YouTube tutorial. Yes? I looked up how to kill Moon Lord. Don't make fun of me, I'm scared. But I learned the method. I learned the tells, I learned where to go, and I readapted. It turns out pattern for phase one is very simple. One shot, two shots, fly over the Moon Lord for laser, two more shots, cycle repeats. I found that this wasn't actually too hard to replicate and got him locked out in phase one easily. The only thing I'd really have to worry about is phase two, when the true Eye of Cthulhu's come out. These things shoot a gigantic laser, and while I believe they're on a timer, during this fight I was not very good about looking for a tell. This for me made it really easy to outrun the Moon Lord and have him teleport back to me, which caused me a lot of unnecessary hits. But I kept going, and everything was going well. That was until now! I don't know what happened here, man. The Moon Lord's at like 3,000 health, and I'm at like four. If I mess up even once here, it's over. I just need to take it slowly. My heart was racing extremely fast during this boss fight, but I kept it slow, and I kept doing the pattern. I let my health regen, and before I knew it, the Moon Lord went down. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> F die, baby! Woo! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm gonna throw up, I'm gonna throw up! I just beat all of Terraria with a permanent blood moon. So I guess that answers my question. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it fun? No. This was probably the hardest playthrough I have ever done. I really thought that having defense in this playthrough would mean that I'm not dying to random enemies in the world, but apparently Master Mode just doesn't care about that. And anything below 80 is pretty much just zero. But I think that the biggest hurdle that I ran into here was the fact that I chose bows only. That was a really stupid idea. I just didn't realize when I started the playthrough just how bad it would be. I really thought that I'd have access to do fish run or be able to take on the Empress of Light. And I'm sure for some players, you could do one or the other. Not that I recommend you take on this challenge, but in theory, I could have geared myself up a little bit better. Ultimately though, the playthrough is entirely possible and a pretty wild spin on vanilla Terraria. This video also took me an enormous amount of time to make. So if you could leave a like and subscribe, that would seriously help on the channel a lot. I know that you probably hear that a lot, but that genuinely does help out the channel a massive amount. This video also came out a lot later than I expected it to. I had a massive amount of work to get done, and future videos will come out a lot sooner than this one did. But that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this one. I put a lot of effort into it, and I appreciate every single comment that you guys left on the previous video. The amount of support is just completely insane, and I can't tell you how much it warms my heart. But that's about it. See ya.